Hi there, I'm Winslow Dumain. I'm a comedian out of Chicago, and I'm sitting here with my friend Jay Brandstetter. And this is I'm from the Internet. Yes, and welcome to I'm from the Internet, a podcast about something awful.com. Uh, I'm Jay Brandstetter, as he said, and this is our episode zero, our sort of inaugural episode where we're going to sort of introduce you to the basics of what something awful is, why we think it's important, uh, who we are, why we think we're the right people to you know talk about it, and what we're hoping we can do with this podcast. I'm really excited about it. We've both wanted podcasts on this topic for a long time and there really aren't any so it's going to be you know it's going to be really cool to actually get to provide that to people something awful was a very important comedy website for me growing up because it was this kind of perfect encapsulation of like a very subversive type of humor that felt very edgy and dangerous and uh it, it appealed to me but it also appealed to i mean God, what, millions of other people? I don't know how many accounts they ever had, but it was a very, very, very big and impactful website. Yeah, like at the time of, like as of today, uh, November 21st, 2022, I have the stats pulled up. They have over 207,000 total registered users, which is a big deal, we'll, which we'll get to because you have to pay to join here. So mm-hmm. every single one of those is 10 bucks. This is a website that has like made multiple millions of dollars for its owner over the years. They have uh, over uh, over a quarter million total posts over the years. Uh, this is, it is a big site. It's big and... Uh... It's also extremely diverse, and we'll, we'll get into this later. One of the things that I think is very interesting that a lot of young people might not know about is that the internet used to feel very, very differently. The internet now, I feel like I interact with it largely through major apps and then, like, Reddit, right? And it is still... Reddit is kind of the closest to the message boards, right? Because it is still... So somewhat community-based, but it's, it's still very, very different. But right now, the internet feels like it's being controlled by the very rich, very established, very public, front-facing people. Like, they have a PR campaign, and you do it through uh, social media, right? And the days of something awful were very much like the Wild West. The number of absolutely bonkers stories that you would see play out in real time, and it, there were, like, very little like alarm bells going off. It was back in a, a more dangerous and weird and subversive time before the most major parts of the internet started to be controlled by people who already dominate the real world, you know? Yeah, the the joke is always that there's only like four websites that everyone uses now. And uh, just to give some context for the specific moment we're recording this in, you know, we're just going through Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter. And a lot of people have been kind of preparing for, you know, if and or when it goes down, what they're going to do next. And a part of that has been people sharing sort of the websites they've posted on over the years. And it's interesting. So you look at it, a lot of people, like in the 2000s, a lot of them posted in a variety of different uh, message board communities based around specific interests or specific media. Media properties. And then in the 2010s, everyone just kind of started posting on Twitter and Tumblr and Instagram and Reddit and Facebook. Like everyone just used the same few websites where something awful, it's part of that more bespoke era. So it had a much stronger identity and a much sort of more focused tone. It wasn't just everybody on the same website. If you were a member of something awful, you kind of, even though it was very diverse, it also had a very sort of strong sensibility that a lot of people fit into and identified with. Yeah, and and that's what makes it very interesting is that, like, I wasn't on something awful nearly as much as I was on uh, a different, uh, smaller forum called Manson USA. So I was a huge Marilyn Manson fan growing up. And so while it was a much more, you know, it's, it's for Manson fans. So it's like the one unifying factor is that we're all into this kind of music. A lot of us are goth, but there were still whole chunks of the thing of of the website that were just for movies or just for other types of music. Some people got into Manson because they were into David Bowie. Some people got into Manson because they were into like industrial stuff. So we all had different things kind of united under one umbrella, right? And it still felt like there was a lot of difference to us. Like we would still get into tons of arguments and there are uh, lots of fights on that side. And something awful was as far as I can tell, really just like a, a comedy, like silly satire website. Right. So you would have like these, a whole chunk of the website is, was called like pet Island. 
and then there's uh, you know cinema discusso, and then there's the the video game stuff. There's like chunks of the website that were separate, and so you would have little cultures and little communities pop up there with their own heroes and villains, and then those same characters would you would find them over in somebody else's part of the website. And so it created right now when I see posts on on Reddit, I see just the content of the post and whether or not they were the original poster, right? Because they highlight the name now. I don't care. I never look at like, oh, I've seen this account before. But on something awful, you'd be like, oh, it's this dude who called me some very horrible names. And now he's talking about, you know, he's talking about something else over here. Now I can start yelling at him over here. And then, you know, you create relationships with people because it is this bespoke community. And that's what caused a lot of the very interesting things to fester. Yeah. And in its early days, there was a much, people were much more sort of unrestrained and unselfconscious in what they shared. So a lo- you got to develop a lot of really interesting personalities over the time. Like you'd be like, oh, that's the guy who tried to glue a bunch of uh, cases to the outside of his DS and completely ruined it. That guy's <laughs> that guy's so silly. I wonder what he's saying about this topic now. Or it's like, oh yeah, that's the guy who gave away his dogs because he was too focused on his World of Warcraft guild. I don't like that guy. I don't care what he thinks. So you get this. It's, it's, um, and also a part of it too is because since something awful is divided up into all these sub forums like on websites like twitter you'll have like the main character of the day you'll have like the one thing going on that everyone knows about right but something awful didn't really and doesn't really have that each one is its own little community so like people who mostly post in the movie sub forum cinema discusso might not be aware of what is happening in general bullshit the sort of general topic thing well but people in general bullshit might have very strong opinions about cinema discusso because they went in there to talk to talk about a movie and you know people didn't agree with what they had to say about it there because it was more of like an enthusiast present it gives it a really neat dynamic and sometimes it's not always the most healthy but it also it created a lot of really good posting and some of the best moments are times when these different communities would interact with each other and unite over a shared interest or a, a topic would be moved from some form to some form and you could see different communities reacting to it and adding their touch to it. And and I know that there might be people listening now that are like, oh, what are you talking about? Like, I can go on live leak and I can watch videos of people getting, you know, their heads caved in. I can see crazy things happening on the internet all the time. There are... For sure, there are Instagrams where there are people being very wild, and you could watch that in real life. The way that I had to describe it to a friend, because uh, I was telling him at this podcast and what, how fun it is, is that because so many of those things are crystallized and they're saved and archived and you can go back and read them, there would be, you know, a guy posted a thread about his review of Godzilla 2000 or whatever. And it was this really crazy bonkers review and people are already starting to make fun of him for it, right? And then you get to page three and the guy posts again and he's talking about his divorce and how that's messed him up and how mad he is. And then you're like, oh man, this is crazy. And then people start like cross-pollinating. They start making memes about his review now that they know that he's being divorced and then they have more information about the guy. And then by the time you look down it is 15 pages and it just keeps getting crazier and crazier and you can watch in real time a person rip their life apart but you're doing it not in real time i guess but you're doing it in the retrospective and the way that i described it to my friend is that reading some of these old archived threads especially the one about the man walking across america which is one of my favorite things on the internet which we will we will absolutely get to yeah. that's on the mount rushmore of threads little, little sneak peek for the next episode <laughs> i mean grover house drill we have so many things coming but the way that i described it is like it's like you're in a soundproof box in someone's living room and there's a table in the middle of the room and there's a priceless Ming vase sitting on the edge of the table. And then you watch a cat enter that room and you're just beating on the glass, screaming, but the cat can't hear you. You're like, don't go near that vase. And the, you're just watching it happen and you click next page, you click next page and you just see the inevitable happen where the cat hops on the table and you're like, don't do it. <laughs> and then a cat knocks it over and it shatters everywhere. And you're like, oh. Oh my god, we're at page 15. There are 156 pages of this person continuing to make bad decisions. 
Yeah, like like the classic sort of metaphor that people on the website use is someone who has like st- dug a hole that they can't get out of, and everyone's standing on the edge of the hole, going like, "Dig up, dig stupid!" Up, like in stupid. The Simpsons. <laughs> and, then, and instead, and instead, the person just keeps digging deeper, and then eventually, people just get bored and start like peeing in the well, yeah. or like trying to build elaborate contraptions to lower a rope in there, and all they're doing is making it worse. Like it's a very funny snowball effect of even when people mean well, things are usually kind of just uh, katamari out of control in crazy ways. It's like. Like you had these hyper specific forums, you know, like maybe you have your Star Wars nerd forums and then you just have a bunch of nerds talking about Star Wars. That's great. Um, Or, you know, in my case, the Manson stuff, that's kind of where I was. But when you have such a broad collection of people like something awful, you are going to get all kinds of people. And then when you put them in general bullshit or like just like a hot button issue thread, something like that. Very much just like a a trending topic on Twitter, where if it's a trending topic, you're going to get people commenting on it all over the place. And so that's how you would get these very unique takes on so much stuff of like people from all walks of life are bumping into each other. So it kind of had like this thing of, you know, you have 150 people from everywhere in the city packed into the DMV and then some disaster happens and they have to lock the doors and they all have to just live together for a week. It's it, think of uh, like the movie The Mist, where it's like everybody in the town is stuck in the in in the in the general store. That was something awful, and it ended the same way. <laughs> Yeah, except instead of, like, giant mantises, it's, like, Twitter. Yeah, yeah instead of the giant mantises, <laughs> it's just, like, the, the silhouette of furries walking in the in the fog. <laughs> That's what it was. It's, it, it's just one very giant furry. <laughs> right. It's, like, the way that, um, in, in order to, to make it, uh, how do I put it? There's a lot of people who might not understand, like, the scale of things, but, um, You know, a lot of the memes that you see, a lot of like the jokes and running gags that you see on Twitter. Yes, a lot of them are made on Twitter right now. Right. Um, But a lot of the uh, like the ancestors of those jokes were uh, maybe they were taken from Reddit. And then before Reddit, they were taken from Dig. And then before Dig, they were taken from uh, 4chan. And then 4chan was started by Christopher Poole who was mad at something awful for banding anime, right? And yeah, it was because they had what was called uh, the pedo cost, which is where the anime sub forum banned a bunch of people who were, um, you know, being creepy about anime girls. And a part, and Christopher Poole was what was uh, one of the people who was either part of that ban or just saw the opportunity and didn't like that they were squashing down his free speech. So that's when he he had his four ch- his version of Japan's two chan called four chan that he opened as an alternative where a bunch of the people who are kicked off something awful went. So in a way, something awful is like the parent of 4chan right and so i mean if you think about the meme of like the the dice or the dice the dominoes falling over and so it's like you know richard kianka the guy who started uh something awful touching the very first die and it's like uh richard kianka uh, uh wants to start a comedy website and then uh the next domino next domino next time and then the very final one is like QAnon lunatics rage at the uh, at the Capitol. Like there's the impact of this website cannot be cannot be stressed enough, you know? Yeah, I know over the past year and a half, like a lot of things have tried to draw a line from them to to the January 6th insurrection. But um, something awful is really, truly like a direct line, like the domino meme like yeah. you said. And and also, um, and also a part of it too, like you were mentioning the history of it earlier, that really can't be understated because most of the modern web is geared towards, you know, new content, taking stuff that's new right now and kind of shuffling it away in the background, especially on places like Twitter, where there isn't really like a useful archive or search f- function the way that we might want. Whereas something awful, they have archives going all the way back to 2002, which is really valuable because like in projects I've done in the past, you could go to a show like, like Lost or Breaking bad and see how people were reacting to it when it aired like literally live posting and you'll see like a page of people going like oh my god what the hell whatever like a crazy thing happens and it's just so having that preserved in amber is so valuable and the fact that it's still up too like Mm -hmm. most like how many websites that started in 1999 are still active and up like that is a very rare thing to happen let alone one of this size 
Right. Yeah. And the that's kind of the core of this podcast is the fact that we have access to these archives, because if we didn't have access to this, uh, the the majority of the stories would have to be from what people remember. Maybe there's some goon somewhere with a hard drive full of screenshots or something, but then we'd be operating off of a very limited amount of information. But as far as I can tell, I mean, yes, there's probably some stuff that's been expunged, but like. Back in the day when I would be bored at work, I would just hop on something awful. I'd find a way to you know get onto it at work, right? And then just go to the uh, go to the archives, go to like the comedy gold mine because you could. There's like a rating system for threads, and you can put it to the comedy gas chamber. Which you know, listen, it's if if you're going to be offended by these things, this is the website that we're talking about. You know, <laughs> um, yeah. There's actually a whole story behind that name. That is going to be a very probably a whole episode of its own. It's oh, really? Very interesting, and it's also one that I kind of have a personal involvement with. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if if a thread was rated really well, it, I think it'd be auto sorted, or maybe like a mod would put it over into the comedy gold mine, and so you could just like click on these random stories and it would just be just the most crazy, silly things happening. Um, and you could, it's all there. It's like this infinite buffet. I, I remember I asked you at one point in time, like what was it like to be an active participant of the, of the, uh, the forums when it was first kicking off and, or not first kicking it off, but like during the golden age, right? And one of the things that you said was just like you would be like crying, laughing at page three, click to page four. And then by the time page four loaded, there would be six more pages of just people. Yes, running jokes into the ground, but also like finding new subversive ways to make variations upon the joke. And that's how you can get things like Photoshop Friday or like uh, any of the other front page articles were like, if something was funny enough, they just throw it on the front page and it was just the funniest stuff. It like defined the comedic uh, language for so long, you know? Yeah, and, I'm, and to circle back to something you said earlier, like about a lot of meme DNA having its origins in something awful, like, like impact font using yeah. impact font in memes is literally something that started on something awful. Same with the whole, putting text on top of an image and posting it as like a response to stuff. They called them image macros back then because it literally was a little macro on the website where you would type in a keyword and it would pull a relevant image for it. Right. Because that was back in the days when hosting images was not something that was just common like it is now. Like one of the fun things is this is actually maybe a good excuse for us to kind of circle back and talk more about our origins for all this. But like I run a, I run a pretty popular Twitter account where I post stuff about something awful. And I've had people ask me questions about wanting to join it. And one thing I've seen from like teenagers that were just enjoying, it's very funny is they don't understand how to put images in their posts because you know, you're used to being on websites like Twitter and Tumblr where you upload the images there. The idea of having to upload the image to a separate host like imager and then creating an embed code for mm-hmm. it and embedding it in a post that's, just a skill people don't grow up with anymore right and oh like writing (laughs) you know the the age of myspace taught a lot of people how to use html coding you know like my first website i coded like i used dreamweaver right but like i had to like dig around in the guts of the the html to make things work the way that i wanted to and now a lot of things are automated and and that's good. I'm glad that things are automated. I'm not going I'm not like a boomer complaining about like the internet is too nice now, but <laughs> I think that uh taking a minute to look back and go like that these were very uh different times and the way that it has continued to affect our lives is very interesting. One of the things about this podcast I want to kind of get up front is that, like, we are speaking very fondly about this, and there is a lot that we think is cool and good and admirable about something awful. And a, a part of it, too, is that I think there's a lot that we could, that modern websites and communities could learn about. But also, a lot of it really sucked. Like, oh, yeah. a lot of it, even at the time, was rough. Like, it was a site that was, that was an edgy humor site. And it was well moderated, even by modern standards, but at the same time, what was acceptable and what was actionable was very different. So just know that, know that, uh, just go into this with that expectation. You know, some of the stuff we're going to be talking about is 20 years old, which is, which is forever in internet time. Right. Like the, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll find a way to, to, to discuss this delicately, but like the 
early 2000s, I, uh, I, I had to sit down with my nieces recently because somebody mentioned the uh, Woodstock 99 documentary. How many people here ever woke up one morning and just decided it wasn't one of those days and you're going to break some shit? I just had to sit them down and be like, you have no idea. Like, dudes are bad now, but Woodstock 99 really captures the the hyper bro alpha masculine bullshit that was i mean permeated every aspect of the culture you know just cargo shorts and date rape just like these monster dudes of course not every single dude was like that but uh our our comedic like lexicon was decided by very subversive people in comedy, um, particularly like, you know, S- South Park defined a huge chunk of, of comedy um, and something awful reflected that. So like there was unbelievable amounts of uh, casual um, homophobia. And what's funny is that like we're talking about homophobia as like this thing that we've moved past somewhat. Right. It's it there. I've, I used to be called the F slur constantly online. Um, It didn't even phase me. Like it's every single person would be called that for any reason at a time. Like even, even affectionately, it made no sense. Um, But like, there's still huge aspects of our dialogue uh, that is, has not advanced yet. Cause like the fat phobia, the transphobia and all these different things that are endemic everywhere now were just as bad, if not worse on the something off of forums. So it, there, there are, um, there are places that need to be, um, handled delicately, but please, if you're listening to this, bear in mind, we are talking about a historically toxic fan base, <laughs> like an unbelievably toxic fan base. Yeah. And that's also why, why I wanted to bring it up in the first episode. Cause, or, because I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a parody of myself. I don't want to be always apologizing or explaining that th- we just know going forward, this is what it's going to be. And we want to try and be fun and entertaining about it and educational. So and th- it's, it's hard to be funny when you're always apologizing. <laughs> so, right. And like, I, I mean, it, it, it's something that, like, yes, we will probably have to, prob- uh, you know, occasionally remind people that we don't actually believe these things. But, like, there, are, you know, I'll look back on uh, some of the screenshots I have from back in the day that I'm just like, oh, man, I forgot that there for a while the funniest thing that you could do would just be take a picture of anything and then just throw the N word on it. And that would like be the funniest thing I have. Like I have so um, a little glimpse into my life. Uh, I was like the only kid in my friend group growing up that had like a pretty nice desktop computer. And so part of hanging out at my place would be uh, un- we called it Uncle Winslow's picture time, which was I had these hard drives of silly pictures that I've saved from uh, Manson USA, something awful, 4chan. Um, and any other weird little thing that I found at the time. Right. And I, so I have hard drives of like thousands of images and I would love to set up a Twitter feed that would just randomly share one out every hour. Right. Um, however, I would need to go through meticulously because there are so many that I had saved because I thought that they were funny back in the day. Obviously I don't think that these things are funny now. Um, but they were just like the most extreme thing that you could say on the internet. And that was an encapsulation of a whole identity of just what's the most hair raising toxic thing that I can vocalize. And that was just there. That being said, there was also a whole side of, of something awful that was died in the wall, dedicated absurdist. And that's, that's what I love. Right. Um, but you you can't you cannot separate these two things because they they were both we're we're talking about one big website not just the the things that are nice and sweet about it you know yeah like, like if I was going to listen to a World War II podcast and every episode they had to explain that war was bad every time they started talking about something right. I wouldn't want to listen to that podcast and we're kind of doing the same thing yeah. here with internet history 
yeah, I, I, I can kind of get pulled out of those things where like, there's a, I don't know. This is a much, much, much bigger conversation. Um, and, uh, the, I, I follow, uh, some authors that talk about this kind of thing. Um, the idea that like, you need to have your main characters remind people that uh, doing bad things is wrong. And it's like, you, you don't need to do that. We, we are looking back at these people knowing that a lot of them are scumbags, but a lot of them did grow up. And we'll get into that, you know? Yeah, we're respecting your intelligence. We know, we, we, you know that this isn't right, and we've made you aware of this at the beginning. So, of course, we're going to criticize it and speak about it from that way, but you get it. And we're here to talk about somethingawful.com. It was an enormously significant comedy website um, from the early 2000s. Before we get into that, a little more about myself and how you might know me. Uh, I again, I am a comedian. Um, I've been on uh, tour for a little bit. I, if you've ever seen a sticker that says Gatorade should be thicker, that was me. Um, I'm the guy behind that little micro meme from back a couple years ago. Um, I make my living selling uh, my illustrations. I made a very, uh, very fun deck of tarot cards called the Tarot Restless, which is based on like Dark Souls and Silent Hill and Bixinski and uh, all the black metal and death metal that I love. I'm a big metalhead. Uh, I sell that around the world. I also uh, make my living selling like crazy ass bumper stickers and weird things that I design. Um, pins and uh, water bottles and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I kind of just live my life on like what's something evocative and rich and interesting and funny that I can create. Right. My big thing now is that I'm making a card game and uh, I'm doing everything by hand. So I'm designing it all, writing it all, uh, doing all of the artwork. I I just love making things from the ground up. So I'm a, I'm a big, big creator type, right? Yeah. And also another thing you need to know about Winslow is that he's like an extremely cool looking goth. Like, like when he first messaged <laughs> me, I thought, I thought he was like going to tell me that vampires were real or that he was a vampire <laughs> or both. And, I, and make no mistake, if that's still an option, if that's still on the table, I am 100% pro dark gift. So by all means, you know, if, if that's ever a thing, you can let me know. I promise your secret's safe with me. I have given uh, Bones as gifts a, a very silly number of times. I will be completely honest with you. Uh, but no, I've, I've been told that I look like I could get the lead role in Columbine High School Musical 3. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm working with. But uh yeah, I'm, I'm a big, I'm big uh, art art nerd, so that's kind of what I what I'm into. But I'm also a big comedy guy, so uh, something awful was a very very um, important important website for me back in the day. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then there's me, Jay. I um, I've I've comedy has been important to me pretty much my entire adult life too. When I you know growing up in uh, the suburbs of Jacksonville, Florida, I didn't have a lot of culture around me. And, you know, finding Comedy Central and getting really into stand-up and sketch comedy was was really meaningful and also kind of my first way of making friends with people. And also sort of going forward from there, I'm, uh, I've am i spent most of my adult life on the internet, for better and worse. I'm very knowledgeable about it, which is one of the reasons why, uh, why I was interested in making this podcast, because I am a very good resource on that. My most recent and biggest internet claim to fame is that I run the Twitter account, uh, Crazy Ass Moments and Something Awful History, which has blown up way beyond what I expected. Like, I was expecting this to be, like, something for, like, me and, like, a couple other ex-goons I'm friends with to, like, laugh at or maybe share with their friends. And as of recording now, it has over 21,000 at this point. That's crazy. I, I also yeah. made a spin-off Twitter account called Crazy Ass Moments in Furry History, which is also doing very well. I've done oh, I, have, I have a YouTube channel where I've done like video essays and YouTube poops. Uh, I've done podcasting. I'm kind of I kind of dabble in a lot of things. I also spent a lot of time in the past uh, being a troll, which is something I'm very not proud of, uh, but also something I've been working. That's part of the reason why I do stuff like this is cuz I feel like I need to make up for how uh for how I acted in the past and I feel this is a good way of taking the knowledge I have and using it for good. And I'm really happy to be here with Winslow. Yeah. Uh, I should also say that I run the Twitter account uh, at mayor silent, where I am the mayor of silent Hill. Um, Cause I'm a huge nerd for the silent Hill games. Right. And it, it just gave me an excuse to write jokes as uh, the, a character of the mayor of silent Hill. And it's been a lot of fun. A PC gamer 
interviewed me as the mayor. And uh, yeah, it, it's fun. We're, we're, I love just being able to like interact with a uh, very uniquely sarcastic and like desperate community as the Silent Hill, Silent Hill fans have just gotten absolutely just dragged around for so many years. Cause you know, the, the first four games were a lot of fun and then every single thing that came in afterwards is just an in- increasingly desperate disaster. So it's been a lot of fun interacting with those, those fans. But I did want to say that, I mean, this is, this is something that we can get into later is that, you talk about being a troll and um, you know, from what I've seen of the way that something awful works and the way that, I mean, before I knew trolling was a thing, being a dick on the internet just to get people's, you know, Jimmy's rustled, that was just like a mode of operation for the internet. It, you know, cause I'm from the Manson forums uh, and a little bit from something awful. Right. And that was just a way that people interacted. And so there's, I think there should be a a distinction between uh, or uh, among people that are trolls who are like otherwise functioning people who go out of their way to uh, be mean on the internet. Right. Um, Or maybe in real life. Sometimes I guess there's real life trolls probably. Um, And then there's people who are, just like deranged and they're just mean because they're, they're just mean people and they happen to have an internet connection. And then there's, and I think this is a very important distinction um, coming from a Marilyn Manson forum. There are a lot of people who are just like poorly adjusted, uh, angsty and angry about a lot of things and they uh, lash out and um, understanding teenage angst and the way that it affects our culture is a very uh, important uh, aspect of, of something awful and of understanding everything. Because if you look at um, the notion of a popular media figure who has a lot of fans that are young, uh, angsty, um, middle class, generally young white men who uh, feel like they didn't get what they deserve or feel like they've been shafted or outcasted for one reason or another. And you have the media figure that says a lot of controversial things to rile people up. Are you talking about Andrew Tate? Are you talking about Marilyn Manson? Are you talking about Ben Shapiro? Are you talking about uh, even Madonna? If you switch a few things around in there, you know, she did a lot of controversial things to get people's attention. And that kind of thought Um, And that kind of behavior and the saying edgy things to get people's attention and to get a rile out of uh, to get people riled up is very, very, very much in the DNA of something awful dot com. You know, very much. Yeah, it is a website that is that where that is where uh, that is where a lot of its humor sort of originates from. And over the years, it has sort of changed and evolved as as we all have. But especially in the early stuff that is sort of the overriding thing, it's much like you were talking about Marilyn Manson and attracting or all those other people appealing to young people. Like if you were a, a young, white, nerdy male in uh, the early 2000s or late 90s and you were on the Internet, something awful was kind of that was kind of like your equivalent of something like Marilyn Manson. It was like your edgy thing you would go to hang out and kind of feel like, you know, very transgressive and kind of, you know, above it all. And, and, and just the attitude there at Spons, it, it fostered was very much that same time. Type of thing, and then the people who stuck around as they sort of grew up, their the attitudes on the site changed as well. People would leave, the people who stayed would would mature. It's a really, really interesting just just whole ecosystem to explore. That's why I'm so happy to finally have somewhere like this this place to put it all down and share it with people. Right, and I think that there's there's probably a, a, a like a college level word for what I'm trying to explain here, but the way that you can watch a community age and progress with a community built around maybe one figure like, you know, Manson USA was built around Manson. Um, and to like a lesser extent, it was also built around the guy that built the website. Um, and the, uh, communities built around topics, right? So like, I, you know, was a huge Manson fan and still a lot of his work inspired me. 
obviously uh, I don't, you know, cite him as an inspiration too often anymore because one, I've grown up. A lot of his younger, his early stuff is great, and I still really like it. it. Still means a lot to me. But now, why would I call myself that? Because he's very clearly done some pretty horrible, despicable things. I'm older now, and I can see that, right? Um, and so, a lot of the Manson fans that I uh, was friends with growing up were uh, women, were trans, were um, all. The types of things that Manson had, Manson, I guess he hasn't come out and said anything particularly transphobic, but he's done a lot of sexually aggressive things, right? Um, and so now the fans of Manson that are left behind are the curiously right wing. Um, and with the, uh, you know, especially with like, you, know, you look at Owen Benjamin, who was just a funny guy, and then he said a whole bunch of racist shit. And now his uh, fan base that has stuck by him because he never apologized. He just went crazier and crazier and crazier. You know, Chris Delia and uh, Chris Delia, I guess, and Louis and like, or like one of one of the founders of the Proud Boys was literally a stand up. Like right. there is a very deep relationship between comedy and a, 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 a pushing regressive and reactionary ideas on young men. Right. And so uh, but when you're looking at a community like something awful you can kind of see that community grow because it wasn't uh, based around one person's identity. Um, I mean, you could say that uh, Richard uh, Lotex is the, you know, he's the guy that started the website. He had uh, a huge amount of influence on the website. Right. Um, but there, especially in the early days, especially in the early days. Um, but there were still a lot of parts of it that were uh, very distinct and they were just allowed to be what they are. And so that's how you do get to have people that did grow up, uh, and became very well adjusted and are still just like, yeah, I love something awful. It had its problems and it was a it was a mess at times. But like, that's where my friends were. I don't say that about Manson USA. You know, so it, it's a very interesting glimpse into uh, a, a type of like almost like a, a, a necropsy of an old community that is still somewhat active. Um, but it, it's not like the golden days. Like right at this very moment that we are recording at 3.14 p.m. on a Monday, there are 4,436 registered users like actively on the site right now. Like, yeah, this is this is not a this is like a big community by any standard other than like that of the mega websites that we now use. Right. And, uh, you know, a a lot of it is like. uh, The way that I, I picture it, I just think of just the the. You know, you've built a new city on top of an old city, and then you build a city on top of that. Then a hundred years later, you build another city on top of that. And when you're on Twitter, it's like you're just you're you're kind of it's like water world. Nothing is really forever. You just have these individual threads, and sometimes you know they'll like link back to something that will happen. But like it's everything is very fleeting. And in order to make a post on uh general bullshit like the like the basic open page of of the forums right you have to go there and see what things have been posted before you and you can see all these other conversations happening and many of them have uh hundreds of posts in them so you you are, are kind of like steeped in the history and the culture of the website it's it's a very um i don't know i i think that uh history is it's more than just you know battles and elections and things like that history can be kind of an examination of a culture. And like when you get into like a micro history about, you know, a specific website, I think there's just so much interesting things, so many interesting things to say about it. And internet history is especially interesting because for pretty much all of human history up until very recently, like history has been piecing together what happened based off of like a small number of surviving clues and right. like event recounts where it's internet. All this stuff is still there. It's preserved in Amber and it makes it so interesting because like, yeah, like you know, when, people, when someone said or did something back in like 2005 or something, it's there always like something awful is in the library of Congress. They preserved it <laughs> as like one of the noteworthy, <laughs> Like like cultural really? contributions of the internet. It's literally on. It has its own page on there and everything. It's not publicly available, but they are they are actively archiving it on their servers. 
as a piece of like American history on the internet, which that'll let you tell you, you know, if, even if you don't take, believe anything we have to say, like that is clout right there. The, the, that's that so the funny. library of Congress has decided that you, you belong there, like alongside like the crystal flute and everything. <laughs> yeah. That goddamn flute. Um, no, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. And I think in order to understand it more, we should discuss a bit about like, what are, the main tribes of the something awful forum. So if you wanted to give us uh, just a, a bird's eye view of the main forum page, and if you have any uh, little interesting comments about like the main aspects of those forums of the sub forums, totally, yeah. rather, I have it pulled up right here. And I'll admit like, yeah, the first time I started reading something awful as a comedy website in 2006, but I didn't really start reading the forums until 2007. Cause the, every time I looked at them, I would get kind of intimidated because there's so many of these little sub forums. You can, go Oh yeah. Through. My like, first a- posts there, I, I just ran out cause I was like a young guy and I was very sad and very sensitive. And like, I posted some like very mild, silly thing. And they just ate me alive. And I, I was like, I'm never going back to this mean, mean website. And then, you know, two weeks later, I just lurked, you know. <laughs> That's very much it. Like, there's a whole kind of meme about people swearing that they're leaving forever. And then, like, two weeks later, just showing up back to, like, nothing happened. Yep, yep, yep. So you are not alone. That is a very, very normal response. But, so, yeah, here. So I have it pulled up. And um, so at the very top, we have general bullshit, which is true to its name, just sort of like the general discussion form. This is for just about anything. And when the site started, originally, there were only a few of these. And as time went on, people would start spinning sub forums off of that because general mm-hmm. bullshit would have a lot of a co- thing. And people would be like, we don't like having to scroll through all these movie threads. They should have their own sub form. We don't like doing it through these TV threads. And as time went on, basically, the site general bullshit is kind of like the primordial ooze that the rest of the site crawled out of. Mm-hmm. And it's and it has had its own revisions and rules over the years, including a, some very major ones that I've definitely I've talked about before elsewhere and are going to be some really good listening in the future. Yeah, it's it very much the same way as like uh, 4chan progressed, right? Where they uh, they started off with just a handful of uh, pages and then, you know, piece by piece, they've just added more and more things. That's, I'm glad you mentioned that because, yeah, 4chan's different boards are maybe the closest comparison to something awful's different sub forums. How they have the different, and also, like, sometimes, like, one board will kind of raid another, or, like, if something happens in a board, it will get linked to another one, and the people there will follow that link and start arguing there or something. That's a, that's the best, like, modern comparison I can think of. And, and also, for G, uh, another thing is each sub forum has its own sort of sub forums. And I'm not going to do all of them because it would take forever. But an important one with GBS is uh, called it's called EN uh, E slash N. It's uh, short for everything slash nothing, and it's an old sort of catchphrase because it's where all the personal, like really personal life stuff mm-hmm. goes. Because it's called that because it's the stuff that means everything to you, but means nothing to everyone else. Like that's the type of like meanness we're dealing with. Where if you want to go there and be like, my girlfriend left me, and I don't know how to deal with this. I'm I'm uh, I'm worried. I'm with my 20s stuff like that that they're like nobody cares about this <laughs> the things right. that are literally just the like so it has its own thing and that's probably going to be the source of a, that's going to be the source of a lot of episodes because when people talk about their personal lives there unfortunately that you know they do talk about some uh, really unfortunate and interesting stuff there and it's going to be a lot of like more legendary something awful posts came out of there right i also want to state that like there uh was a not a small part of this website that was just kind of like pointing the finger at like the freak of the day. And, um, a lot of that, you know, there's definitely some freaky things that people do on the internet. Um, but a lot of that was really just bullying. And I think we've seen a lot of, uh, like the darkest possible aspect of it from like libs of TikTok and like the Kiwi farms stuff. And so we're going to try to avoid talking about, you know, those particular, you know, people that were kind of singled out in the past, right? Definitely, uh, yeah. That it, That is a very important thing with this, is that we are anti law cow culture, culture. The stuff we talk about here, we talk about because we think it has a greater purpose, like historically and culturally, and also kind of 
tying into the stuff we're talking about, about wanting the internet to learn from something awful. And, oh yeah, the ones on EN that are just like, a shitty person did something bad and then people were mean to them for it. There's nothing to gain there. That's just a train wreck. And we're not, we're not here to look at train wrecks. We might, I, we, we might talk about the history of those train wrecks. We might talk about how those train wrecks were important in context, but we're not just mm-hmm. rubbernecking at, at human suffering here. Right. That said, you know, there are, there are, there are some some of them that are like culturally significant, like Chris Chan and things like that. But other people have kind of have explained that um, better than I think that we could. So, but uh, what's the what's the next forum you have there? Yeah, and then the next one is post your favorite. This is one that was a, it's a newer one, and when I say newer, I mean it's like over a decade old. But it was <laughs> one that they started. Um, it kind of. Was, it's it sort of exists as the in a, I'm saying this in a nice way from a place of love, but a lot of it is just like it's where you repost stuff from Reddit. Like it would right. be where like post your favorite funny picture, or post your favorite cat picture, or it would be for like kind of just like light, unfocused discussions. Like post your favorite little moment in a video game, or you know, post your favorite single use website. So it, it's 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 an, it's kind of a wild card forum because topics can be about anything. So sometimes they build their own cultures and get very interesting and odd but it's also a pretty chill place like if you just want to relax after work and go look at cute pictures that's where you go and then um and then uh, the next one is byob which is um oh wait hold on i'm sorry i skipped one actually and this is a very important one i need to talk about it's um fuck you and die also <laughs> um it's abbreviated i i say it as a word fiad i know so i've seen some people spell it out but i i like to say fiad just for simplicity's sake mm-hmm. and um and f- fuck you and die is the sub form for like epic flame wars and crazy and and uh, crazy pictures and stuff like it's it's the unmoderated part of the website where basically the only rule is you can't post anything illegal so like that's where you go and it's like if I, I open it up right now, literally like on the first page, I'm scrolling through and there's like multiple threads where they're like, uh, uh, I, I can't read the titles on this podcast. It is, it is, <laughs> so Fiat is, it's because Fiat is a place that is, in spite, if nothing else, it is very funny and it has created a lot of, a lot of modern internet people got like comedy people from weird Twitter got their start there. And also FIAD has is as problematic as it is, it has also sort of functions the site's immune system at times. Since they're unmoderated, when like a moderator has been stifling a, a topic in a in on subform, they'll be the ones to sort of dig it up and learn about and eventually go out. Like like they're responsible for um for outing a lot of like problematic behavior on the site and getting some of the some of the more infamous moderators actually have action taken against them. So hmm. you know, obviously Fiad is you know not you know not perfect. But I'm I'm being very I'm being very neutral to them. Like I don't endorse them, but they are very important to this, and we're going to be talking about them a lot in the coming uh, episodes. When keep in mind when there's like these flame wars going on, it's like almost entirely existing on a keyboard, and so like it it's very funny to read some of these because it is like seeing two squirrels fighting in a park over, you know, an acorn, but you're sending it to the most dramatic music possible. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you're watching these people just absolutely go at each other's throats. Uh, but it is just two nerds on two different sides of the planet yelling at each other about like a, a movie opinion or something like that. Yeah. And it's also very much the, like, like that sort of the carts, like the very cartoony exaggerated type of threat, like saying you're yeah. saying you're going to kill someone's entire family with sledgehammers and bazookas. Like, yeah, obviously they're not going to do that. This is like, it's a place where everyone's operating on that save wave. Like it really is just kind of everything goes and it doesn't spill over to the re- into real life in the way that it does in other places. So, right. Yeah. That's, and that's really what ultimately is the most important thing. But anyways, now they've done that. The, BYOB is like the opposite of FIAD. Its whole thing is about being chill and being relaxed. And it has sort of like an enforced positivity to it. Like, like ba- even back in the days when you were, um, when you had to type in proper capitalization stuff, BYOB was the place where you could type in all lower caps and it was totally cool. It, <laughs> it has a, it has a totally different, uh, color scheme from the rest of the forum. It's like a light purples and blue and lavender. It has a little animated <laughs> gif of a, it has a little animated gif of a kitten in a, uh, in a hammock, just, 
swinging back and forth at the type of the at the top of the page. It, it has a very different feel, and a lot of people on something awful find it very annoying. But I think it's charming, and it has also originated with a lot of very fun and pleasant stuff there. Like it's just where where sometimes people will just do stuff there, like hey, I'm watch I'm watching a movie. I'm going to post like screenshots of it constantly and make jokes about it, or it would be like, hey, come here, and I'm going to change your avatar to a picture of a duck I drew, and then everyone will have different ducks or something. It's just it is a very gentle and fun place in in a website that is usually very harsh and abrasive. So uh, that's something that I think should be mentioned is that uh, there was this, <laughs> this aspect of the website where you could, uh, you, you make your, your account, you pay for it, right? Um, you pick your screen name and uh, your, you have like a little byline beneath your name. And then you have your account picture, your little avatar, right? Um, all that's pretty familiar to everybody who's using Twitter right now, right? However, uh, for something awful, somebody else could just pay to change your avatar, <laughs> and you would have to pay to change it back. And so it's it's a. Uh you could imagine the the humor it created. <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually a perfect organic time to talk about the registration process because I was going to do it at the end, but this is actually perfect for it since it came up. So, um, yeah, the thing about something awful, like I mentioned earlier, is that you had to pay to post on it. That was something that they implemented around two thousand one. Mm-hmm. And the and the reason why they did that was because the site was getting popular and having to moderate. Basically, the guy who ran it had lost his, his was having money troubles, and he was like, it, "I spend so much money on this website to keep it running. It, we, I should be making money off of this." And also, this way, people it would dissuade people from creating troll accounts because that was a thing that was starting to happen. Someone would like the story mm-hmm. he always tells is that someone registered an account called Triangle Man, and they would just constantly post pictures of triangles in every thread. And it just things like that happening. So he added the paywall because you have to pay ten dollars to post, and sometimes you have to have an account to read the site. So if you, just to be able to access and participate, yeah. you have to pay up. And also, this makes it so that if you violate any of the rules and you get banned from the site, uh, the way that this the, the 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 system works is they have a you can be if if you're for punishments, the punishment system is. The lowest level is a probation where you can't post for a certain amount of time and they're in designated chunks of time, like six hours, 12 hours, a day, three days, a week, all the way up to 100,000 hours for people where you really just want to tell them the fuck off forever. That's that's the one you'd pull out on there. And then after a probation is a ban where you cannot log into your account or post unless you pay $10 to unban your account. And that's what they call the, the, the 10 bucks. You're paying the, you're paying the posting tax. And they, because of that, people actually care about the rules and follow them because on Reddit, you don't even need an email address to create a new account. You just type in a name and you're good to go. Whereas right. something in places like Twitter, you need a distinct email or a phone number, but it, it's still very easy to create an alternative in the case that happens. But with this, you have to pay money. And the thinking is, even if you pay for a new account just to troll and get banned, we got 10 bucks from you. So ultimately, we win. And Right. And also, you have to pay money to uh, to upgrade your account. Like well, the avatar, the picture next to your your posts that that appear, that cost uh, it cost five dollars to change your own and ten dollars to change someone else's. So um, <laughs> that's yeah, that sort of thing too. Is you have to pay more to change someone else's. So it really is kind of like an act of aggression, where it's like I'm sp- going out of my way to spend extra money out of spite. To the point where it's almost kind of like a badge of honor among posters there where the thing is it's like if you piss some someone off so much that they pay ten dollars to buy this for you, it's especially when it's over something completely dumb and impenetrable. Like one of the funniest ones, it's in big red angry text. It says Rome does not have robots, fuck with <laughs> <laughs> like, and it was from it apparently it's because of from tabletop they're from the tabletop gaming forum and they were doing like a role play and they wanted to play a robot character in an ancient Rome setting. But just out of context, Rome did not have robots fuck with. Is very funny. Right. One of the parts of Reddit that I still go to is the uh, subreddit drama, uh, where it's just like, you know, you get to read other people arguing on, um, you know, all throughout the website. You get like the a little glimpse into the psychos everywhere else. And you can make your flare, which is like what the text that appears next to your username, uh, just an excerpt of any crazy ass thing that's being said. Right. And so you'll just see these things where they're like, Yes, I can look through all the threads, but like what thread 
did you find this clip where it's just some guy saying like Adolf Hitler would not have enjoyed Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov and I have proof and you're like <laughs> okay <laughs> tell me more I guess oh yeah no that's a perfect comparison it is like it's like Reddit flair except you get to choose your own text yeah. and also you can put links in it and and one that they added a couple years in the site are a thing called gang tags where people could put little images under it kind of like how on deviant art or, or people would put those little flare tags or how on message boards you have those long things in your signature about how like this user drinks seven up mm-hmm. <laughs> this user thinks cord is awesome stuff like that and that's and it, that's like its whole sort of like self-expression and culture on the forums as well. That is the thing too is like even though it is like an established forum interface, there is a lot of self-expression in how you create your account and everything. And you can even have a you can even have signatures, although most people just turn them off by default. But on places like FIAD, they they really go nuts with the signatures. It's oh yeah, really I used to be a signature nerd uh, on the Manson websites. They the admin would get mad at me because you know back in the day, my little signature image was just like a you know, seizure inducing flickering of like the photos, like the scary goth photos I was taking at the time. And, you know, (laughs) it would weigh like five megabytes and it would weigh down an entire page. And it was just like, you know, back when everybody's internet was terrible, it doesn't mean anything now, but um, yeah, I, I signature culture match, having a matching signature and avatar meant that you were serious about the things that you posted on this website. You know? Yeah, it's like when people, on, it's like when your Twitch page or whatever, you have a whole customized layout for right. something like that. It was, you're, you're really serious about it. Very much. And then, um, yeah, and then after the avatars, they have what's called Platinum, which is an upgrade for things like sending PMs, uh, private messages, being able to upload images as attachments, uh, just, just, and also the ability to report other people's posts to the moderator. So that was another funny thing too. Is like if you, if you wanted to report someone who was annoying you, breaking the rules, you had to have bought platinum. So they really kind of monetized every aspect of the site in a way that is like you know, kind of evil, but also very ingenious and also led to a lot of really interesting culture in a way that you never really see anywhere else. Right. And then on top of that, you had to pay $10 for the archives, which is the, you know, to be able to read anything that is more recent than a year or two, because they start moving it into the archives for computer reasons. I don't, I don't understand, but I, I have that, of course. So that's why I'm able to pull up a lot of the stuff. And like on the Twitter account, that's why I do a lot of screenshots and stuff. Because some of this is stuff that people, it's locked behind a paywall. So maybe in the future, I might do some stuff like that for the show as well. But we'll, we'll see. Yes. And then let's see. Outside. Also, another interesting thing about it is they have emoticons, or they call them smileys, like the little animated emotes like you might have on something like Discord. Because the thing was, anyone could create and upload them. They just cost $30 each. So if you see an emo in the thing, that means somebody paid enough to, you know, cared enough to buy that. So like a popular game, like uh, like Mass Effect 2 is really big on the forums and had its own subculture. So there's like 15 different bespoke Mass Effect 2 of smileys on the website yes. that nobody uses anymore. Or like you'll have ones, and it's also just like a neat archaeological thing. Like you can go back and see like, oh, there's one of the weighted companion cube because Portal used to be, was really big. Uh, here's one of uh, Super Milk Chan from Adult Swim. That, I, that was a thing that existed i forgot about that it's just kind of a neat little archaeological dig on its own especially because some of them are just totally incomprehensible if you don't have like the lore behind them oh yeah it's it's a very specific thing that's like it, it's it'd be hard to really explain what it's like to be on the forums to someone who did not like live and breathe that kind of culture but just like it, i mean imagine the kind of internet that would exist if everything was absolutely stripped down, you know? And yes, you could post images, but you had to like kind of do work to do it. You know, uh, you had to like find a different host for it, find that you'd have to put it into your actual thread and things like that. And the internet now is just so streamlined that it's just this never ending chaotic uh, stream. Like, I mean, everybody who's ever tried to, they've seen a funny TikTok and then accidentally scrolled away from it. And you're like, Oh, well, I'm never going to see that again. You know, this allowed for people to actually like go back and visit, revisit things and recreate ideas. And it really fostered the community. 
you know. Yeah, and also, and something awful is old enough that some of its oldest threads you'll look at. They have in the thread title, they have a little fifty six k warning. The idea is if you're on fifty six k dial up instead of DSL, be careful because this thread has a lot of pictures in it. It's going to take a while. God, fifty six k warning. God, I have not heard that in so long. If you don't understand what that means, be grateful. Like you are so lucky to not have to deal with that. But yeah, that's about the main stuff of how you register and how you how they monetize all this stuff. In terms mm-hmm. of making an account. And I guess one other thing is that you can also, they have a banner ads on the site. They have their own internal ones and it's, you can pay $30 to buy one for your own sort of uh, link, an outside link, or you can pay $5 to buy a banner ad for a thread on the forums. So whenever a thread was really popular or people wanted to drive traffic to it, they'd pay five bucks and put a banner ad up for it. So that was <laughs> a whole interesting thing about it too. So next up is, uh, is, is games it was formerly known as games now it's called video games and it's the it's the gaming sub form and it's probably it's one of the most popular and active ones on there mm-hmm. because something awful did does did start as a gaming comedy website the founder uh, richard lotax kianka uh, before something awful he worked for planet quake which was uh, which was uh, you know a gaming website and that's where he got his start was doing video game comedy and he's very much a gamer and into gamer culture and gamer humor so even now a big part of something awful is just video games and playing them and talking about them. Yeah. And you can kind of start to see the through line between like the hyper toxic masculine, um, you know, gamer culture and like, yeah, as, as problematic and, and as difficult as gamer culture is now, it has been like this for a very long time. So you can kind of see that going all the way back to, um, to, to the early two thousands on something awful. Yeah, and that's a, that's a thing that keeps happening on the site is they keep trying to make like a more relaxed, unmoderated spin off of the gaming thing, and then each t- each time it winds up becoming horrible and having to get shut down or, or or rebooted or whatever. So yeah, that's that's still very much alive and well there. Yes. Yeah, and a sub forum of video games is Let's Play, which is ah. very important to, to internet history because. Something awful, they didn't invent the concept of recording yourself playing a video game and then sharing with the internet, but they popularized it, and a lot of the earliest people to become, like, well-known figures in there, like like Slow Beef and, um, or Void Burger, like, uh, I know Void Burger, who now works for Giant Bomb, like, a bunch of these early, role, like, these early Let's Play people, that's where they got started. Yeah. And that's another one of the really interesting things about something awful that keeps popping up in it is where they are the inventors or progenitors of a big internet thing. And then the person running it completely fails to capitalize on it. And then it winds up becoming a huge thing. Like in another timeline, like, like something awful could have been Twitch. Like they, they could have realized, Hey, people really like this. We should be investing in this or, or like there have been a bunch of times when someone like, uh, like Yahtzee Croshaw from Mm -hmm. the escapist, got to start posting YouTube videos there and they, they'd even offered him a job, but they just weren't paying very much. And so, and so the guy who ran the site was like, yeah, go to the other site. They're going to pay you way more than I will. And then that, just thinking about like how all these big changes, it, it makes exploring the history really interesting. Right. Yeah. And then, um, so beneath that we have, you know, there's traditional games, which is tabletop gaming. It's, um, it's pretty well regarded from what I understand because since it's well moderated, a lot of the tabletop gaming uh, community can be, uh, you know, it can have a lot of fashion in it and a lot, big part of the identity there is making fun of the bad elements of the community. So they have like really good stuff just about like uh, archaic old, like, game systems or player manuals or also like specific figures in the industry. It's it's that's not really my scene, but it's still really fascinating and a lot of good stuff comes out of it. And if you're into uh, into card games or, or tabletop stuff like that, um, hop on my discord. I'm making a card game and I need help. <laughs> I don't need help, yeah. but I'd like to show it off. Get, we're almost at a playable beta. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting to play it. And then um, next up is debate and discussion, abbreviated as D and D. Speaking of tabletop gaming, and its thing is that it's the place for serious debates about politics, and it's the political subform. And it's it has a it has a pretty bad reputation on the site because you know it's a place where people argue about politics all day. It's like. It's of course it's not fun. It's it's a pretty miserable experience there. But right. there is also a lot of good information there. Like some people, like a uh, Brown Moses was a poster there who eventually like went on to. I think he works for some like 
Bellingcat uh, publication or something. Now, oh, okay. like, people have 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 gotten like greater positions in the political and intelligence scene from there. And its big thing is that it's very strictly moderated. It's supposed to be like a debate club. You have to argue your point, but as long as you argue it, there's no wrong thing. It's just people arguing their point. So a lot of really heinous stuff has come up there in the past, and it's kind of been tolerated. Because it was like, they're better about it now, but it was very much that kind of both sides. Well, we're having a debate here, and he makes some good points, you know. Yeah, because a lot of this was very much informed by the um, kind of the the South Parkification of middle class white guys on the internet of just like the the you know the 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 false dichotomy of like both sides suck kind of thing um the what is it like the turd sandwich and douche giant douche giant douche and turd yeah. sandwich or something like that and uh that bled into a lot of cynicism and then you get a lot of i mean this is more true of the 4chan politics board poll rather than the boards elsewhere uh, or specifically on something awful, but uh, you get a lot of like accelerationism of people who like don't even necessarily have fascist beliefs, but they uh, start encouraging fascism and, and destructive policies and things like that just because they want whatever the current system is uh, of liberal democracy to be ripped apart so that they can rebuild something else afterwards, which is a bold move. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so the, the 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 politics were very much informed by the the uh, culture of the time. Yeah, and that is the thing too is how it's changed over the years. Because in the early days of the site, like the two thousands, um, D and D was very like libertarian lean, as was the style at the time among like you know angry white guys on the internet. And then around the time when the two thousand eight election started started happening, uh, Ron Paul got really big, mm-hmm. and the Ron Paul people were were so kind of like big and obnoxious that they that people created a spin-off sub forum for them that eventually kind of just became like a political shit posting thing and then eventually became like a very big wellspring of leftist ideology on the internet. It was hmm. called La Lasse's Fair and like a lot of the right. Chapo Trap House people used to post on there. Like we don't know their usernames but they reference it and stuff. People a lot of like some like early some like Gamergate people, like the the anti Gamergate people got their start there. It's like the Velvet Underground or whatever. It's like there was only 30 people on the forum, but every people there wound up making their own big, th- important thing. Right. After debate and discussion is uh, C-SPAM. C-SPAM is sort of like the modern equivalent of that of Lasse's Fair. C-SPAM was spun off from the uh, from the 2016 election, and it's sort of a political shitposting thing. And it's very strong leftist leaning uh, nowadays, but also it's sort of like a big part of C-SPAM is like being angry at liberals. And a lot of it is it's a, it's a leftist sub forum that focuses most of its uh, sort of anger uh, towards the towards the center left. And so there's a big, strong rivalry between C-SPAN and D&D, where D&D is more sort of like decorum, debate club, sort of like – or more sort of like establishment Fucking yeah. nerds. Exactly. They're they're like lanyard nerds there. So <laughs> they, these two nerds. subforms have been they've been locked in like Mortal Kombat for years now. And it's like ninety percent of where the of the posts on the big like site feedback thing are just people complaining about each other. It makes it makes researching the Twitter account kind of tedious, but also like, what are you gonna do? It's the internet. That's what right. people like yes. to do. Yeah. It's the style at the time. The the heart is petty above all things, you know? And then next is Ask Tell. Ask Tell, true to its name, it's a subform where, where you create a thread that is you either asking a question, seeking answers, or where you present yourself as an authority on something mm-hmm. and will tell and will tell things that people might ask you. And it's led to a lot of really interesting stuff over the years. Like, w- w- I think a really like a well known one is where people from like the one of the like Orthodox Judaism communities in New York. Uh, I can't remember the exact name, but like one that is like very insular and like locked up. Like, where somebody who left the community started posting there, and we're posting about like just the life there and like the teachings and stuff. There have there've been ones about like Mormonism and stuff as well. They're very good. One of the one of the posters, Prester Jane, like she grew up in a cult. And she gets, she's posted about that before. There is a lot of really interesting stuff there. And also, there is a lot of really intense geekery on show. Like, there is an Ask Tell thread about pens, where people gather around talking about, like, which $1,000 pen they've bought most recently. And 
And then also doing things like taking up journaling because like I'm buying all these fancy pens, but I don't really write anything anymore. It's just mm -hmm. very interesting glimpses into into the passions of, of human beings. Oh, yeah. My buddy Dave Ross has a podcast where he used to do a segment called uh, Boring Opinions, where he would have a comedian on with like they would have like a top five or a top ten list of like their ranked experiences or like their their ranking of something. Right. And one of them was like their favorite types of traffic light. And so they're like, oh, yeah, number one is the left turn green arrow, because that one is just for me, baby. Like green arrow, everybody gets to go. <laughs> Maybe I don't even get to go because I'm stuck behind somebody who doesn't even see it. But like, a, a, you know, a green light, but a green arrow left turn. Oh, it's all me, baby. It, I, I just love those kinds yeah. of things where you can get into like the we all have these boring opinions. But how many of us get a chance to like put them into writing? Because I could talk about the, my favorite pens all day. I'm an illustrator. I've got favorite pens. Yeah, no, strong opinions about very mundane topics are, when done right, very funny. I'm, all, I'm very in favor of yeah. that type of humor. And I'm sure there's drama in there, too. I'm sure there's people like, oh, you like the fucking G2? Because you're a goddamn normie, you know? Like, they're total sellouts. There is one that actually wound up becoming, like, there were one of the threads there was like about ask tell about like working in the adult film industry mm -hmm. and like two of the big posters there, I think wound up being the subject of some documentary years later because some bad stuff happened to them. So that might be a future episode. So I don't want to talk too much about it, but yeah, just, just all kinds of stuff has come out of ask tell over the years. For sure. And then after that is a uh, serious hardware slash software crap that isn't like super active. It's just where you ask questions about like computer hardware or speakers or things like that. It's very straightforward, but uh, the important thing I want about it is a sub forum called a uh, YAS post. Your operating system is a piece of shit. <laughs> and it was founded sort of like, sort of like a uh, Lossy's fair or the other sort of lighter, they call them FIAD likes, like what, like sort of sub forms that are a little, they're less moderated, more laid back, more kind of trolly and silly. And Yas Post was created, it's that for computers, and it has like a very big culture. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff about computers there. There's also been a lot of really interesting people to come out of there. Even like the guy who owns something awful now, his name, his username is Jeffrey of Yas Post. Like, oh, yeah. Their name is literally in like there. So it's, they're a pretty big active site with a lot of culture there. So I'm sure we'll get some good stories out of there. For sure. After that is Inspector Gadgets, which is like cell phones, uh, iPods back when those were like a thing. And that's mostly why it existed was for people to talk about MP3 players and stuff. And, uh, now it's, it's still around for phones. There's a sports argument stadium, which is where people talk about sports. I'm relatively ignorant of this one because I'm the type of nerd where I just sports don't really, I'm not like, I like, I've enjoyed learning about them and the stories that come out of it, but I just not, it didn't really have any appeal to me. So, but there are some good stories that have come out of there because, you know, it's people being passionate about stuff and having these little communities that develop over the years. Of course, you're going to get some, some fun stories and personalities. Oh yeah. I, out of I that. think that if you're not into sports, but you're like, a guy like us or like we're into data or just into like stories. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a story guy. Like I, you can take the most boring topic in the world, but if you give me like a narrative, I'm all about it. John boys and everybody at secret base is a YouTube channel and a website, which just goes into the deep dives and the cultural history of like weird things that have happened in sports. And it's, I will sit there and watch him talk about the Atlanta Falcons for four hours and just be wrapped. I love it. So yeah, no, John John Boys is great. His article about playing Madden, like it's called, I think it's called this, this the machine is bleeding to death. Yes, where he like <laughs> set the team of all the strongest stats versus a team of all the lowest ones, uh -huh. and it like broke the game. It's an amazing read. Yeah, he he could write about whatever. The, the fact that he's writing about sports and makes me want to continue getting into it is just like that. Just shows how good you are at what you're doing. What I'm saying is, John Boys, if you have any sports argument stadium stories, by all means, come on the podcast. He strikes me as, a, as an absolute goon. I could, And I say that in a nice way. He strikes me as somebody who was uh, raised on this. So, hey, maybe someday. That is one thing I didn't mention. I, I, or at least I might have forgotten to. But yeah, uh, so the members of Something Awful, they refer to themselves as goons. That's the name of the collective. Like how people who post on Reddit are Redditors. People who post on Something Awful are goons. Mm -hmm. we weren't just insulting him <laughs> yeah it is also very fun because you do get that when people are unaffiliated like goon and also as of late gooning is like a completely different term and also there's like a streaming group now called the goons or something so oh, yeah. it's a it's very fun to have like a who's on 
for a situation about the word goon. Yes. And then uh, also, I guess one other interesting note about Sports Argument Stadium is that they have a poker sub forum. And during the days of online poker, a lot of like big, successful poker players posted there, including like people who people have won like millions of dollars in poker tournaments oh, yeah. posted there. That's awesome. like it's, it's kind of fascinating how just this whole world I'm not aware of just had like its superstars kind of posting there. And then it, it kind of got shut down because online gambling got banned. It turned out also like people were kind of getting involved in some stuff in there. So that might be an interesting one for the future. The Just the, the history of poker on something awful. Uh, and then after that is uh, You Look Like Shit, which is the uh, diet, fashion, and fitness sub forum. Oh, God. Yeah, it, the, it used to be called Watch and Wait, but then they made the name Meter for some reason. Like, I I just got off of a comedy tour where it was me and uh, my buddy Derek Sheen. And, you know, long, long, long drives from city to city, right? And we just devoured the podcast Maintenance Phase, which is just this... Very interesting takedown of diet culture and fat phobia and like the fact that I, you know, I have stupid regressive beliefs that I'm trying to like work myself out of and I'm making an honest effort to do it. And that is in the year of 2022. The the idea of like the names that people were being called for being overweight on one of just on the street is a nightmare. But on the one of the most toxic, <laughs> broy parts of the website is it's uh, I uh, that's going to produce some very very difficult topics I'm sure. <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. Like I'm 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 a big fat guy. Like when I was like a teenager, when I was in high school, and I'd like walk from the city bus stop to home, people would just like yell like call me fat from their cars when they drove by. Like people are people are very mean about it, and they still are to a, to, to a degree, especially on something awful. There's a whole really that might be an interesting episode in the future is the the weird like designated thread for hating fat people that oh, was yeah. around for years. I mean that was a thing on Reddit. Too. Really, really bad. You know, there's a whole thing on like redditors freaked the fuck out when they banned the. Uh, can't even remember what it was called, but it was just like it was. It was just called "fat people hate." It's just like yeah, you, our fat people hate you. Like that's so psychotic. Like. What's going on at home? <laughs> like that. Yeah, that is that is a very interesting subset of internet behavior that like is that is on something awful and also still exists in the modern days. Where is like finding a target that you think is acceptable to hate, so you could just spend a lot of time being really mean to people, right? Just because you want to do that, like you know, it's it's just like I I'm very left uh, socially, uh, like socialist kind of left leaning. And there's a lot of people who are, are very similar to me politically that like their diet is to go to Fox News and to listen to Ben Shapiro and to listen to Jordan Peterson and just become enraged constantly. And it's just like you you don't need to do this. And so it's it's very interesting to me that there are people who like will follow accounts just to say mean things to them or like collect pictures of fat people just to post them and call them whales. Like that's so psychotic to me. Like that you, you can unplug from this machine. You don't have to live like this, you know? Yeah. As somebody who's been there, trust me, your life is so much better when you unplug from that and find better and more constructive things to do with your time. Like, like making a podcast. Yeah. I mean, believe me, there are specific groups of people that are good to hate. No, I'm kidding, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will list them now in order. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then and then I guess uh, a sub a subsection of of you look like shit is the goon doctor, which is where people go to post about illnesses or rashes or whatever and get amateur internet help for it. And there's you know obviously you know American healthcare fucking <sighs> sucks. It sucks that it's, we can't get like <laughs> it's hard to go to the doctor. But at the same time, there is a point when it's just like asking a random stranger and taking their advice is. A lot of bad stuff has come out of that. The but. idea of, like, I have this, like, separating, bubbling rash, and did I go to a doctor? No. But don't worry, I asked a group of people called the goons, and they told me to put, like, lemon on it. <laughs> you know, they told me to put pine salt on it, and, oh boy. It, I, that oh, yeah. gives me the same kind of feeling in my gut. Then when I think about like people who genuinely go to goop for medical advice, 
this is just goop, but scarier, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's, it's amazing that they, cause like even on Reddit right now, I, I try to post on a fitness part of Reddit to like get advice on like my lifting schedule and stuff like that. And part of my information was like, well, you know, in high school I was very anorexic and I've gotten my eating habits back. I'm a bit better about it now. And like across the board, everyone is like, we are not going to help you because we don't want to be involved in helping somebody who should be talking to a medical doctor, which makes sense. Like if, you know, you don't know my medical history, I mean, maybe you could tell me what weights to lift and when and how that's a thing, but like they don't want to get sued. It's amazing that something awful, that advice from something awful didn't get people sued, you know, like part of the, the weight forum was a tox clause which was like a way of encouraging yourself to uh, continue working out where people would post like, I'm going to be able to run a mile in X amount of time within six months, or I will, you know, donate $2,000 to this thing. And, and then you post your progress. And if you fail, then you have to do the thing. And there's, you know, there's whole things of people that's like, well, my tox clause is like, I'm going to cut off my pinky finger if I don't get six pack abs. And it's like, the fact that you guys didn't get sued is insane. <laughs> yeah. And, and put a pin in that because we're going to talk about some much more liability inducing some oh, claims later on. Yeah. And also for anybody who didn't figure out from context, the tox clause is a, it's a thing where you, you declare that you are going to do something or that something is going to happen. And then if that doesn't happen, you have to do some sort of challenge or get banned for it. And like people like a very popular one is during presidential elections, people will tox for their candidate. And it's actually arguably been one of the reasons why the site turned from like libertarian right leaning to more left after 2008 was because of all the people who talks for Ron Paul or John McCain uh, getting, uh, getting banned. That's so funny. It's, it's just like these, whatever happens, a, a large number of people just won't pay the money and come back. They'll just go somewhere else. That's so amazing. I, like it's it. Uh, what was it? The the Scottish that they would send out their own prisoners out to cut their heads off at the beginning of battle. <laughs> like it's it's so funny that like entire uh, political ideologies of this website have kind of self exterminated because of their radical beliefs. I think that's very funny. It is, yeah. And then um, and after that, there's the great outdoors, which is just you know hiking and stuff. Very you know very low key, very very good. Uh, Goons with Spoons, which is the dedicated cooking sub forum, mm-hmm. which is the source of a couple of very fun legends. And also, like in general, it, it's been like it is a good resource, but it's also, you know, like like young men who are move living on their own for the first time being like, check it out. I, I cooked this chicken breast. There's no seasoning or anything. Oh, like, yeah. It's horrible. But yeah, th- there's there's been some very fun drama to come out of Goons with Spoons. Then um, after that is automotive insanity, which is the, uh, the the subform for cars, and you know it's a car subform. There's of course a lot of it's just gonna be people shit talking like the different brands, but it's explicitly one for gearheads. Mm-hmm. Like they even have like a pin thing at the front where it's like if you're gonna ask us what your what car to get, and you're not someone who cares at all about tinkering with engines or whatever, these are the ones you want to get <laughs> because just like that's not what they're there for. They're for like customizing and like souping up cars and being very knowledgeable about it. But yeah. that is interesting about how the uh the breadth of the website is kind of revealed in that because you have these like debate nerds and then you're gonna have like these politics wonks and then you have uh gearheads over here and then you also have like uh you know the fine arts and stuff so you have i'm pretty sure there was even maybe this is me me misremembering things but there was like a section for like poetry and writing and things like that is pet island which is sub for for pet ownership where there's threads for each different type of of pet and they are it's very it's if nothing else it is a great resource for pictures like if you have an animal you like you could just subscribe to the thread and you'll get a constant thread like like a bit of lore for me is i'm i'm a rat owner i've had fancy rats for like a decade now i have five rats right now they're i can literally see them right now their cage is in this room with mm-hmm. me and they're all napping right now it's the middle of the day but but um yeah people will go and it's really good for that and also for like enthusiasts or rare type pets like that but also as with people get with animals online especially pets there are some people that are going to be like very overprotective to a point where you like get people that will yell at people if they feed their pets anything other than like human food like mm-hmm. that has been cooked for them or something or but then you'll also in the inverse have some people where they'll be like raising chickens and bad things will happen to them 
And that's always upsetting. And in general, it's just a land of contrasts. Yes. Then after uh, after that, there is uh, there's the firing range, which is the subform for guns and gun owners. And for, I've, I don't hang out there because I'm not a gun person. But from what I've heard, it is like it is the least insane gum forum on the Internet. Like it is well known as a place where it's like they have zero tolerance for like any sort of like Confederate apologism, any <laughs> kind of no like no like oh don't worry I'm just a history enthusiast this 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 hat I'm wearing is just for reenactment purposes or something they do not tolerate that at all there and and in general it's like if you want to learn about a gun or type of guns like it is a place to do that and that said this is a sub forum with a body count we are gonna have uh, we're gonna have because <laughs> is that is going to be an episode that isn't that where cabo was from um caro posted bomb oh, caro some of it was there some of it was on they kind of posted everywhere the what i'm talking about more is it's interesting it's someone who was who was driven away from there so uh, i'm kind of being facetious when i say that but although much more much worse and with a much larger actual body count is the crackhead clubhouse the sub forum <laughs> for drugs Oh um, boy! Speaking of speaking of how have they not gotten sued or in trouble for this? Because this is one that's been around, and it is one. Of, it is like one of the most haunting places online. Like it is a genuinely good resource. Like if you want to learn about a good vaporizer to get or something, right. or if you want to know what type of cough syrup to drink and how much, you can get it there. But they literally have like a heroin mega thread. <laughs> like, they, they have like, yeah, the, this heroin mega thread. thread. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> 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 you'll pay for the whole arm, but you only need the edge. <laughs> yeah, like one, for, like one for steroids. Um, yeah, just just opiates. The opiate one is very bad. Like the thing, and all these threads are like hundreds of pages long and have been running for a long time. And if you go to like the first page, it's that's another something awful thing. Is if somebody dies on something awful and it's confirmed, their account gets gets a perma banned and gets a little note that this person is dead. And whenever you go to the first page of a thread like that, and everyone on the front page has been banned for dying because all these people <laughs> OD. Like it is so oh depressing. Oh my god. And do they give over, the reason? Over, do they tell see, you how they died? It will just be like this user is deceased or whatever. But sometimes, sometimes like their friends or family members who were also posters on there will come back and post about it. And sometimes it will even be its own sub odyssey because the thing is like when you have a bunch of drug addicts that know each other together, when one of them goes away, the next thing that person is going to do is be like, okay, I found all these pills. Which ones can I do? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I'm from Nebraska. I'm not. I'm no stranger to that. But <laughs> like yeah. getting into old houses and just finding the pills left over and having to Google the numbers and the letters on the side of an anonymous pill. Like, yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Like make no mistake. I am, I am 100% pro recreational drug use, but the, the, yeah, this is, this is the scary drug use right. that, um, so <laughs> again, a lot of good stories have come out and, there's kind of a, a the meme on something awful is that like the crackhead clubhouse is the what, the most effective form of anti drug for sure information out there because really I was like yeah I'm never gonna fucking do this like any of these ones they talk about there I was like there's some drugs I'd try but I'm like yeah I'm never touching that I've seen exactly how it goes that's great and especially because this is from people who and you can see their post on other subforms it's surprising because a lot of these are people who are like intelligent and successful in life mm-hmm. and then just ruin all that yeah because it, it really shows you just that like you know our depiction of uh drug users as being like these oh they're so stupid they got into drugs after being told not to it's like oh well maybe it's a little more complex than that <laughs> you know maybe it's got a little more yeah. more to it you know yeah and then after that is uh, is Goons and Platoons, which is now called the Internet VFW, and that's <laughs> the one for uh, posters up for people on the forums who are at, uh, active uh, as service members or people who are veterans, and it's where people go to. It's the military sub forum, right? And like I mentioned, like with the gun sub forum, like as far as military sub forums go, this is like one of one of the least insane ones there. Like there has been some crazy stuff to happen, but for the most part, a lot of it is people who are who are who are leftists because being in the military, like they you know they signed up when they were teenagers and they realized how bad it was, and from there they learn more. And it's like a support structure for them as well because you know a lot they're veterans. They've they've been through shit. They have their PTSD, and having a place we can talk about that with people who have a similar kind of sensibility is. I, I see. I see the benefit in that. It's 
just again, just a thing about the breadth of the experiences on this. You can have a super left wing uh, sub form right next to one for like one active duty members of the military right next to a gun one. Right. And, um, and they'll all be kind of on the same wavelength and even like have cross pollination. After that, it used to be called the Great Race Space, but now it's called the Minority Rapport. <laughs> oh and it's, it's a re- oh, it's, it's a been recent so one. long since I've been on these forums. <laughs> <laughs> this is a more recent one, but it's explicitly a place where it was for, um, like, like for, uh, I don't know, do you pronounce it BIPOC, BIPOC, Black Indigenous yeah. People of Color? Basically, for, it was, like the title says, it, it was for, it's for a place to go where you can, like, for, for, to get away from, like, white people and talk about minority issues with, with, an, with an audience of similar people. So, obviously, I, I don't really post, I don't read it, I'm, I'm not knowledgeable about it, but there have been some stories that came out of it. And, you know, it's just, again, speaking of, of the variety of this, and also, how the site has changed over the years that the fact that at some point they were like you know there's a demand for this these are people that you know want to have a space and they have it now and uh, i just want to put like a little note on all of these is that our ability to search through these uh, forums is kind of bottlenecked by like where we know to look and so I, I've already had a few people that were from you know pet island message me and go like oh you're doing a something awful pod that's going to be great. You have no idea the crazy things that have happened there. And it's like, I don't, I really don't. So if you have any stories that you really want to get covered, just shoot us a a DM or we have an email, iftipod at gmail.com that you can, you can send us your stories. Um, One thing is that, you know, just give us all the information that we would need either to find it or like give us a synopsis so that we can really work with it. If you just say, uh, you should do the one where, like, uh, where you know, Mike sixty nine went crazy on you know, in this cinema discusso thread. It's like we're never gonna find that. So just tell us what you want us to cover, and we're, we're, we'll do our best. Definitely, yeah. That's one of the reasons I'm doing these too. Is so you have an idea of which ones I'm more familiar with and which ones I'm not. But yeah, we are always open for submissions. And after that is a cinema discusso, which is I mentioned earlier. That's the one for for talking about movies and. And it's um I when I did post on something awful I was very active there for a number of years because I think at one point it was a really good it was a very active and good place to talk about film and even now it's like if you go to a place like Reddit all like our movies or whatever it's just all marketing stuff right or it's like on cinema at the cinema level like just pe- people like I like movie like just being like all these movies are good or whatever C- cinema discusso is very in depth. And it is very knowledgeable and you'll learn a lot, but it's also known for, for having like some people have some very wild takes on there. Cause the idea is that it's like, there's no such thing as an objectively incorrect take on a movie, you know, the death of the author, basically anybody is welcome to present these interpretations. People might criticize them, but you're allowed to do that. So you'll have some very outlandish ones there. And there are some posters like a probably most well-known known one is super Mecha Godzilla, where their whole thing is, is they've made a whole sort of posting career out of coming out with these wonderfully outlandish um interpretations of movies and i think a big part of a cd too is that they talk up is that they give the scrutiny to popular movies they give this to like superhero movies and blockbusters it's not all just like uh you know like academy award winners or foreign films or something mm-hmm. and that that's it, it gives a very interesting vibe and i think that that is another way that we can kind of shine a light on the differences between old internet and new is that new internet is uh a, a, like a never-ending content engine you always want to be putting out your newest, hottest takes on everything. Like literally nobody on the planet needs to know Jake Paul's opinion on what was it like? Nope or get out or whatever. But now every single person has an opinion all of the time. And they're all, you know, because Twitter and Instagram, they, they limit the amount of things that you can say, uh, the amount of text that you can say, or even how you can display it. Or because of content filters, it'll be automatically like filtered to the bottom of the algorithm. This you just post and it's right there. And so it it really encouraged people to uh, really actually talk about things and and get into like their reasoning why. Yes, there were huge parts of this website where it was just people like, I didn't like this movie. It was gay or, you know, this one was stupid. It wasn't realistic or whatever. But there's a lot of people that really got their start in like actual games criticism or movies criticism or whatever by being given the ability to actually sit with their feelings and to discuss them, uh, even if it is, you know, 
you know, you're, you're discussing movies while getting punched in the head by a whole bunch of dudes with profanities in their username. Yeah, because the thing about something awful is, like, e- even if you've seen, a, like, a traditional form, like, something awful, like, one where it's the posts are presented linearly in order, it's not, like, Reddit where they're nested, it's just a page of posts, is that there's there's no upvoting or no liking system for the post on something awful. If you want to if you want to show your appreciation for a post, you have to quote it and you, and you like, say, say it made you laugh, or you'll do what's called an empty quote, which is where you just quote the post and then post with just that quote. It's saying... I'm drawing attention to this post because I like it. Mm-hmm. And th- it's just sort of like a quiet way of acknowledging I think it's funny. And that adds a lot to it because since there's no filtering, no upvoting or anything, all every post is equal. Like you mentioned, just to sort of iterate on that. And that that's one of the things that just makes it so unique. And they've even mentioned, like, when this started, it's just because that was a limitation of message board technology. But they've said, like, in the past, they've talked about possibly trying to migrate to new hardware or something in the in the future. And they've talked about how even if we go to a new one, we're never going to have an upvote system. We're never going to have yeah. a way for you to, like, give it hearts or whatever. Because that's not the spirit of this forum. That's not what it's about. Because it leans into the quantification of experience that is the defining aspect of living on the internet right now. Like right now I can tell you the exact number of Instagram and and Twitter followers I have because, you know, I'm a narcissistic comedian. Of course I'm going to know that. Uh, And, or like how many people watch my stories? How many people like this? How many people shared this? All of that exists within like a quantified realm of especially on Reddit where it's just like people upvoted this or people downvoted this and they're going to push you to the bottom. This is from a time when you just put your opinion out there and people fought you with words you know, uh, rather than just clicking the arrow. Yeah. And that also meant like if someone didn't like your post and you kept posting, then they would try and drive you away because that you do have an ignore function on something. Mm -hmm. You could choose to ignore a poster. And for some reason, there's like a weird stigma about it where it's like you're a coward or something if you ignore people, but really take advantage of it, curate your experience online. But because of that, people would have an active goal to, like, drive people off by being mean to them or by fighting with them a lot or telling them to shut up. Like, that was that's that was a part of it as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, after after Cinema Discusso is no music discussion, which is the sub form for talking about music. And I I didn't really hang out there very much, uh, but it is it is. You know, it's a place to talk about music online. It does kind of skew more towards like nerdy stuff like math rock or like metal or whatever. But if you want to talk about music on the internet, that's a place to do it. Um, and now there is a sub forum called the Musicians Lounge for people who make music as well. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's noteworthy. Um, then after that is the Pretentious Hipster Irony Zone, which is the um, the FIAD like of no music discussion. It's just a place to talk about like music and like you know, fashion and culture and stuff in a more laid back way. It is a very sparsely populated sub forum, but it has its own stuff and they've made fun things over the years. Um, the big one after that is cr- the is creative convention, which is the one for, like you mentioned earlier, it's for pe- creating art. So visual art, writing, it's big. They cover a lot of stuff. They have a, a lot of community stuff. Like they have what's called like the Thunderdome, which is where people will, be prompted to write like a certain number of words and then they'll post their short thing and then people will critique it. They have contests, they have collaborations. It's, it's a really interesting place just to, just to see people be creative and a lot of talented people post there. Mm-hmm. Then uh, after there's the book barn, which is the one about books. Um, again, it's kind of skews more towards nerdy stuff. Like they literally have like a designated tag for science fiction and fantasy stuff because that's what most of the things that people post there. But it's big. I think the most noteworthy thing about it is people kind of went crazy there when Game of Thrones blew up. Like there was a whole kind of mock culture there about like about like making fun of the t- the TV show and the books and stuff. But I don't think that's really as much of a thing anymore. After that is TVIV, the television sub forum. This one is this one has some good stories to come out of it because it's it's, it's much more like kind of surface level than Cinema Discusso. People do engage with it critically, but a lot of it's kind of like people posting gifts or shows they like, or, or like back in the day when stuff as actually broadcasted over the air, they would live watch it and post while they were watching mm-hmm. it. And a lot of funny stuff has come out of people 
misunderstanding things that happened in TV shows or coming up with outlandish theories about things. And even better, sometimes people have had those outlandish theories come, come true. But it was it was created because of Lost is basically the main reason why, because there was the Lost threads in GBS for so much. And you can kind of tell. It's very much that type of like watching a show and obsessively speculating it and combing over details and sometimes spoiling it for yourself in the process because you figure out a twist like five episodes before you were, before they reveal it and then it's not as satisfying. But you know, it's, it's just what it is, what it is. Then there's Rapidly Going Deaf, which is the uh, subforum for podcasts. Um, obviously, I, I, I poke around in there about shows that I like. And yeah, it's a great place to learn about podcasts. A lot of like goon podcasters uh, post there about their shows. If you want to learn how to make one, they have an advice one for that. It's a great place to learn about it and also includes radio. So that's kind of one of the reasons why it was created was because uh, GBS, like they would have like a threads for Opie and Anthony or threads for Howard Stern. And because those were like daily radio shows, they were always on the top of the swarms. And people were like, I'm tired of having to scroll past these. They should have their own place. And that's why they created that one. Perfect. Then after that is uh, is uh, Batman Shameful Secret, which is the um, the the comic book sub forum. <laughs> All right. Do you know the story behind the name? Yeah, the story behind the name. Is, do you know it? No. Go ahead. Oh no, it's 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 based off of um, it's like a famous like old comic panel where it's like. The, it's like the superheroes are talking about how they, they've been, like, given some sort of virus that infected, like, their loved ones or whatever. And it's like, um, and Superman is like, Lois, and then Aquaman is like, his wife or whatever, and then Batman's like, Robin! And the joke is like, Batman's shameful secret is that, you know, he, uh, Robin is his boyfriend. So, the, the and classic. I think about it, it's kind of a homophobic topic. It's just mostly comic book stuff. It's interesting because some comic poster people, like in the industry, have posted there. Their web comic threads and their newspaper comic threads are both very active and good. Like, there's a whole fun, like, semi ironic fandom for newspaper comics there where people get, like, really in depth into posting about that day's Mary Worth or whatever. It's very fun. <laughs> like, the guy who, the, the guy who creates uh, the guy who creates Slylock Fox has posted there because like people talked about the comic a bunch and then eventually he found it and was just like, "Hey guys, it was very cute and interesting." That's fun. And then after that is um, is uh, the ADTRW. This is the original summary for that. It's a uh, it's the anime subform. It was originally called the Anime Death Tentacle Rape Warehouse. Uh, obviously <laughs> now they, it, now they kept the, they kept the abbreviation but now it's uh, anime directly to readers worldwide <laughs> where it's just the sub form for talk about anime and I you know I talked about the pedocost earlier so that's kind of its thing is like every couple of years an outsider will be like huh this thread is really gross and weird and then a bunch of people get kicked out and then it keeps on being cool and then people I'm not a big anime person so I don't really read it but I'm aware of the drama and the big flare ups that have come out of it then we're probably we're gonna get mm-hmm. some episodes out of out of uh, ADTRW for sure. And then we're getting close to the end here. So now this is the final section called the community, where this is the sub forums that are about something awful itself. Uh, the first one is the SA Mart, which is a place where you can buy and sell things. And like people run businesses out of there. Like, goons use it like like before Etsy. If you wanted to sell handmade crafts, the SA Mart was a place to do it. And there have been some fun stories to come out of it. Because much like Etsy, whenever people are selling stuff online or, or on eBay, there are going to be scammers. There are going to be unscrupulous oh, yeah. people. And there's a, there's some very fun stories to come out of there. Then after that is, is a local area net, is a LAN, the local area network, where that's just for talking about, it's for local ones. Like every major metropolitan city in America and like other countries has its own designated thread. And that's where if you want to like find people in your area and talk about local events or try and organize a goon meet and meet with other goons in your area. It's not super active, but I don't, I don't really read there much, but it's, especially if you're in a big city, you'll have like a little community there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, at the end of that, finally, is uh, is QCS questions, comments, and suggestions. This was this is for providing sub uh, feedback on the website. If you have a question about it, or if you want to tell them of a change they should make or something, that's where you do it. And a lot of drama has sprung up out of there because that's where people go to complain about stuff. Right. So that's where like bad posters will get outed. That's where like people will complain about moderators, and also that's where like how people how the moderators react to it is sort of a thing. Because there will be a lot of times where a problem will come up there over and over, and they won't do anything about it until something really bad happens, and finally be like. Oh, okay, we should have done this earlier. We apologize. So it's just going to be a kind of a, one of the main characters in a lot of drama. And, and I guess to kind of follow up there at the very bottom is they have the comedy gold mine, which is where threads that are really good get sent. It's where you like lock the thread and put there. That's like, these are the highlights of the website. 
Then there is the comedy gas chamber, which is where they put if a thread is really bad, it, it, they 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 call it gassing it. They gas the thread and they put it there so it, people can't post it anymore. And uh, that's but the, the, both of those are publicly accessible. You don't need ac- archives or anything. So if you go in there, you could dig through both the best and worst of the website without having to buy an account or pay for archives. Mm-hmm. And that's all of them. That, that there's a lot of them there's to go through, lot. but at least now you have a good sort of a good overview, and also kind of a good feel for what just the different places of the site are like. I already have a feeling that this is going to be a very diverse selection of stories because some of them are, you know, a story that's just kind of depressing about a person being bad or ripping their life apart. But there's also just like tales of uh, people succeeding in strange ways or just people being weird and i'm really excited to to get into that yeah. and also the scale varies so much too because some of this is just like one person and just like a thing in their life other ones this has far-reaching effects on the internet and the real world like the reason that reddit finally shut down our jailbait was directly because of something awful doing a thing called the reddit bomb which will probably get its own episode in the future oh i didn't know that that's funny yeah, that's it's 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 interesting that they didn't really get credit for that because it, like I said, diff future episode. It's going to be fun. Perfect. So those are the main uh, pieces of the website that are going to be feeding us a lot of stories as we record this podcast. We have the first few stories already picked for us, but uh, if you have anything that you want us to dive into or questions, complaints, more questions, fewer complaints, I guess. Feel free to send us uh, a DM. Um, I'm on uh, Twitter at Winslow Domain. I'm on Instagram at Calculations. Um, and I'm on TikTok at Winslow Domain too. But you can also email us at ifti_pod at gmail.com. So uh, that's all for me. And uh, Jay, do you have anything else you want to say? Yeah, and if you want to, you want to find me online, I'm on Twitter at uh, Jay Brandstetter. That's what I use on most places. Um, I have a link tree and everything. I guess, sort of in terms of a uh, little bit of self promotion, you know, if you've enjoyed listening to me talk on here, I've done a few other podcasts. My my big one was is uh, called Louis After Louis. It's where I rewatched the FX series Louis in the wake of Louis C.K. being outed as a sex monster, and I sort of reinterpret it through that lens. And let me tell you, like, by the second episode, there's literally refer- like characters telling Louis C.K., like, the character to pull his dick out. Like, it is fascinating revisiting that and kind of horrifying, but also very funny. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm just going to put that out there if you have an interest in comedy, since we were talking about that earlier. And, but, but yeah, I'm on Twitter. And also, I do want to mention, we talked about um, story submissions, but also I've had, a, I've already lined up a couple people who want to be guests on this because they're, uh, you know, who were relatively well-known internet people who were involved in this. So, you know, if you're someone with an audience who would like to kind of help promote the show, since we're a new show, and would be interested in being a guest and talking about your own, uh, your own something awful thing, or just reacting to one of ours, you know, again, send us an email. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, it'll be fun. I look forward to talking to you. We do have a couple guests lined up including people who actually like worked on the website and were close to it. So that's going to be very fun to have that on there and have this provide this original content. Uh, This is a new thing that happened after the Twitter account blew up, but I'm very happy I can do this. I can sort of be a platform for people who are with the site to sort of immortalize themselves and share their perspective. Yeah. I'm I'm genuinely very, very excited. So it's going to be a lot of fun, but, uh, and we will start our recording very soon. So, uh, Stick around, and uh, you'll hear from us very soon. Looking forward to it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. I'm from the Internet was created by Jay Brandstetter and Winslow Main. You can contact us at iftipod at gmail.com or at iftipod on Twitter. Intro and outro music by Steve Isbrook. Audio engineering and editing by Kill Hamster. <laughs> <laughs>